Hi, welcome to this session of the SRE Developer Summit 2021. My name is Raul Jiménez Ortega and I work at SRE Spain as Innovation Manager. And it's my pleasure to be here talking to you and explaining how I have built uh, a CUP provider in order to be able to connect data from PostgreSQL to RGIS, uh, converting the data to a feature layer. So first, um, I would like to, to do a quick disclaimer. Uh, this is not going to be an introductory talk because uh, I, I prefer to focus on the code and the, um, on the project itself. There are very good resources already available. Uh, actually, my, my colleague Rich uh, has given another talk on, on how to connect um, to any data source that you can check. You can go to the kubejs uh, repository on GitHub and, and read the documentation on, on the website. You can also go to the uh, RGIS search engine we built uh, at Esri Spain uh, where you can find for, well, write for Coop and you will find many resources. You can uh, actually, for example, um, take, uh, focus the search using the, the Google parameters, like for example, uh, removing uh, GitHub, uh, for example, Coop JS, uh, JS uh, repository and so on. You will find, um, providers, you will find an, uh, an awesome list of resources, uh, slides. So please uh, check those. And of course, we have also uh, built a, a playlist where you will find other talks from previous the summit where you can find uh, what is scoop. So said so that, uh, let me explain how this provider I have built uh, works. So in order, in order for this to work, um, I build a good provider that it's going to receive an HTTPS request or HTTP request with a parameter. Uh, and this parameter will be the, the SQL statement, but encoded using the base 64 algorithm. So Coop, what it will do, the provider, it will decode that parameter uh, it will get the SQL sentence. Um, it will execute using a um, node, um, node Postgres module. Uh, against the database, it will recover the data and it will transform that data to G, uh, GeoJSON. And then I will be able to reco recover that data uh, into my application. Realize that you can run on this sample provider. I I, I, I just did a, a draft of what can be done, but you can run a, a special operations on, on PostGIS. You can run joins. It's not only about doing, it's not only about doing an, an SQL uh, select, sorry, statement to get all the rows from one table. It's about querying the, the database itself. So let's go to check the, the code itself. Here uh, on the GitHub repository of S3 Spain, you will find um, the whole code of this uh, project. And as you will see here, I have previously set up my environment with these parameters. So I have uh, a background running on my machine with Postgres, a uh, virtual machine. I have this set up, so if you are going to to use it in your local machine, please uh, ch change this. You have a backup of the uh, database I, I have used in here. This is the, the background uh, machine I have used. I, I didn't um, create or, or set up the security, but in case you, you want to do that, because probably you don't want to expose your whole database to, to everyone, or you don't want to give everyone access to to, 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 to the service, you can do that um, following the steps I did for another developer summit in here. You can, of course, also use uh, other users, not the admin as I'm using here for, for this demo. And then I'm using the Coop client 
Uh, this is a tool that you, I recommend you strongly recommend you to use if you are going to build uh, your own provider, if you haven't done that already. Uh, it provides a, a, an operation or a command to, to run um, the, the development server and also in order to be able to debug, you can uh, set this parameter when you are running it. And this is the way we are going to do it because I want to show you how it works step by step. So um, let's go. I think that's almost everything we have. Well, you have here some instruction on how you can uh, create your own, your own URLs, but you are going to see that on, on the code, or I hope so. Okay, here it is, the, um, the project. So first, I'm going to open a terminal, and I'm going to run coop serve slash slash debug. So in order to uh, be able to debug the code, I will need to open, in this case, I'm, I'm using Chrome. So I will use Chrome inspect. This is the URL. So I'm going to open this, which will open uh, this inspector in here. This way, I'm going to be able to, to see what's going on step by step afterwards. OK, now I have running I'm going to open this uh, interface I have built um, in order to simplify the process of querying the, the database so here you realize it ju it just opened I, I I wrote a, a debugger line so it's it has stopped in here because it's querying the service already so let me open here the console and show you what's going on uh, inside Coop before it's it it it's lo it, it loads the data. So it getting the parameter request params dot host. Uh, it's receiving the encoded uh, SQL statement that in this case is this statement that just uh, was sent when the application was loaded. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to replace one character that I needed to do in order to to avoid problems with the URL schema because sometimes the base en encode the encoding of base 64 uses uh, the slash um, I, I don't want to to have one slash because it will break my my URL and then as you notice here I'm using the a to B uh, function which I required previously I, I installed as a module and here I have the sentence I have received within coop my sentence so what I'm going to do is I'm using the pg node module uh, with this I mean pg node js this one this module for for node.js in order to connect to, to Postgres and I'm going to query, I'm going to send the statement. Let me uh, stop in here. So I'm going to play. Now I have here on the rest variable, I have received the results from the database. As you notice, I have 23 rows. And if you want to be sure that it's properly working, we can take this. Let me uh, minimize this for a second. And I'm going to run this on my database. So this is the same Postgres I'm querying. I'm going to run the query tool. I'm going to send the same query. As you notice, I have 23 rows in here. So it seems it's working properly, right? It's rece receiving 23 rows. I have a, a JSON. So what I need to do now is to, pa it's to parse this code and make a GeoJSON in order for in, in order for Coop to work. So let me continue this and uh, here before finishing, if I show you what's in here, you will find that this is the same information. This is the, the, the these are the, the 23 rows and I have built a um, feature for each row, right? In the geometry, 
I just parse the field st as geojson. Uh, notice that this is this first um, parameter on the sentence on the statement. So it's really important for this provider to work uh, to have this uh, property this as geojson. In case you don't have it, you will need to change the code or it will break. It won't be able to paint the, the geometries, right? And then I'm recovering, uh, on this sample, I'm recovering all fields and I'm passing all the fields, uh, the same fields, I'm passing them to the properties. So you will notice that here are all of them. So with that, we can uh, see how this works, right? This is recovering all the data from here. Realize that I'm also doing one thing, which is in case I commit a mistake writing the, the SQL statement, I'm returning the same error that the um, relational database management system is uh, giving to me. So syntax near parks is broken, so this is because of this, right? Imagine I now want to uh, filter the data. So let's keep it simple for now. So I can say where name equals, and for example, I'm going to take the name of this park. Right. So here we have it. Boom. So it seems that it's working, right? Uh, actually, if I check um, behind the scenes, I will see that this is what it was uh, returned by, by Coop, by the SQL statement. Let's now see uh, how to do a more complex queries um, in, the, in, in this code. So I have prepared um, a few more queries that we will find in here. A couple of uh, a couple of them. So in this case, I'm getting an in, an special intersection between trees trees and parks because I really want to recover only the trees that are um, in one park, which is the Baker Park. So let's see if this works. There we have it. So I realized that, um, well, in this case, I'm not displaying the URL that has been uh, created behind the scenes. So let's see how, how, it, how it is done. Let's inspect the application. In this case, that is providing the interface. So in here, we just have a few styles to, to place the, um, the, um, the, um, this uh, box. And we have here a really simple uh, code that it's loading the satellite map. It's loading it in a view. I have defined a function which is using um, the query extent from a feature layer that is uh, passed by as a parameter. And using this query extent, we are recovering that extent from the feature service. Realize that Coop actually it's providing us an extent from the geometries we are recovering um, by default. I'm not doing that manually. And then uh, when the um, when the map view when, when the map is ready when the view is ready and the extent has been recovered, I'm um, going well. I'm doing an animation to focus on the extent of that application. That's what it, this does. So here the next part is loading the first uh, layer. Just when we load the um, the application, I have uh, hard coded one URL in here. Uh, in order to have something when you just open the, the application, I'm loading that, and that layer, I'm going to that extent. 
And then this is what the well, what is trigger when you click on run on, on, the, on the run query and replace layer. So I just uh, well preventing the the form to be to submitted submitted. Sorry, I'm getting the value for the text area. I'm using the B two A uh, function, which is allowing me to encode the. Um, the statement to base 64. I'm doing re the replacement in order to avoid to have a slashes on, on that string. And then I'm composing or generating the, the URL of the layer, which is actually the one that is going to be called through coop. Um, well, the, the one that is going to be triggering the whole thing behind the scenes, right? So what I'm doing here is I am running um, a fetch in order to see if the query has any error on it. Just in case uh, it has, uh, if I uh, if I notice that the um, th that coop is providing me an error, let me let me show you that how it works behind the scenes a again. So let me open this. And let me again, I have to refresh this, right? Oh, I don't want this full screen right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we have it. So when I run this, you will find that in this case um, I didn't do it well I need to add a mistake in here okay no it's not Okay, sorry. I don't know what was going on in here. Probably I had it on, on other requests. Okay, uh, here as you notice, there is an error, right? Which is a syntax error near intersects, which is what I added in here, right? The, the, this S. So what the code is doing behind the scene is just uh, returning a 200 uh, message, it was received uh, successfully, but the query couldn't be uh, executed. So I'm returning that error message. Uh, I, I run this several times, so that's why it's stopping it all the time. And I'm missing something here, right? Okay, there are many requests. Uh, there is, yeah, 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 my mistake. Sorry, there were many requests sent behind the scenes and I have lost the track or what I was trying to recover. Let me try again. Clear this, send, run query. Okay. And where is it? Why am I not getting it in here? Sorry, it wasn't here. Oh. Okay, so here you see that I have received an error, right? So I'm displaying just this uh, message in here. So this is the way it's working. If I notice uh, if, if the pool, if, if the request is sending me an error, I won't load, uh, remove the previous layer and load a new one. So I, wa I will just display the error message on the inner text. So in here, sorry, on this div, and then uh, I will finish the execution, right? I will return false. In case I don't get an error, what I will do is I will remove, in case uh, I have the error message activated, I will remove it. I will recover, or in recovering the, um, the layer, if you realize I used an ID 
when I was adding the layer, I will recover the layer and remove it from the map. I will generate a new layer with the new layer URL I have built previously. And then I will add it to the map. And of course, I will do, I will, uh, do the animation and go to the extent. And that's almost everything, right? I'm just um, attaching the, the trigger in here. So this is everything from this side, from the application. And let me show you one more example I have prepared um, on this uh, application. So what I have done in here too is to prepare the third query. Let me show you what it does. Right into Postgres first. So what I'm doing in here is first, I am recovering from the table owners, which I, I just created to, to add myself in, in here. So I'm recovering uh, myself from, from this table. I'm just recovering how many or the parcels I own from this table, which is a, a relationship table. Uh, from well, It's a, a table that I use to, to allow me to have uh, multiple uh, parcels. So this way I am getting on this second statement, I, with this inner join, I am getting all the parcels ID of the parcels I, I own. And then finally, I'm executing this last statement, statement, which is at the same time uh, another inner join with parcels in order to get all the information from the parcels I own. So if I run this, mm -mm, okay, what was, what was wrong in here? P parcel syntax error. Okay. That was a uh, mistake. Sorry, I had to. I had to remove this. Okay, now that we have this uh, query, which is recovering. Uh, let me show you. I have this. Um, this ID, which is the ID number one. So I'm filtering which parcels I own. As you see, the ID number one has the parcels with the ID one, two, or three. And in this case, as you notice, the parcel ID is not unique. That's why this execution was returning uh, 16 parcels um, from, from the table uh, parcels, right? So let's copy this and check that, of course, this is going to work. Sorry about this. I, I'm going to close the debugger. So as you notice, I have loaded the um, well, all the parcels in here, which I, I, I cannot see them properly, but well, you can imagine that it's everything in here. So I think that's almost everything I want to show, uh, show to you. I hope... Um, this was helpful in order to understand how you can connect a cooped, coop, sorry, to, to um, hosted uh, to, to RGIS through a feature layer, sorry. I was using the JavaScript API for the purpose of this demo, but as Rich and in many other talks you, you saw or you will see, you can or um, and one of the more powerful or the most powerful things uh, of Coop is being able to load these um, layers within a web map um, and being able to use this data on the applications that are in the platform like operation dashboards, uh, web app builder. So take that in into account. That's something I think it's worth to keep in mind uh, as well to recap remember that this was a really simple example i'm not setting a renderer i'm not setting the metadata but i could do that 
uh, on coop so i could even have um, a default renderer for each uh, query i'm sending to the um, to the database through coop and well uh, as always please um, share your feedback through the through the survey with us that's something that help us to to take into account what's worth to keep doing or how or what kind of content it's worth for you to to see during the developer summits uh, it has been a pleasure uh, please do not hesitate on uh, writing me to my email or open an issue on the on github if if you come or if you find something that is not working properly i uh, hope um you, you liked uh, um, this talk um, and was helpful for you. Thanks and enjoy the rest of the, the summit.